Hey everyone, this is Alex USA Days. So we're getting into mobile testing section. Now we already did a lot. Uh, we're at module 11 right now. And module 11 is unique in a way because we will have more of a discussion of mobile testing than a lot of hands-on. There will be a hands-on part with Android Studio, but still you might just want to watch it because mobile testing will be specific to the application and devices. So essentially a lot of things uh, will be learned by you at work on how team is doing it and you will be following the process. Nevertheless, I'm going to give you an overall understanding of the process and some things that have to happen for you as a queue engineer in order to get into mobile testing, things that you should be knowing how to do. Okay, so um, first of all, you need to understand that there are different types of apps you can test on mobile devices. There are native apps and they developed for a single platform, for example, Android specific or iOS specific, right? So they use platform specific languages. Uh, they ideal for high performance, but require separate development efforts for each platform. Some examples of native apps are like Google Play Store app uh, for Android, where you install other applications using that specific app, or let's say, Apple native photo app where you on iOS where you take pictures and you go to the photo app that would be like a native app specifically for iOS for your Apple device. Then there are hybrid or mixed mobile apps. Um, they build with web technologies but run in a native container accessing some native features. So even though you install them through the store, for example, like Instagram, it's only a shell of a native app. Behind the scenes, there's a lot of web technologies, a lot of like API doing the call. So um, essentially the background function of it might be the same or very similar across multiple platforms, right? So they built with web technologies, but run in a native container accessing some native features. Balance, uh, they provide balance between development speed and native features. They may have performance limitations for complex apps. And some example is um, Instagram is native shell for each platform, but behind the scenes, we have web technologies and API. And um, the third type is mobile web app. So web apps are essentially websites that are optimized to function on mobile devices. They're accessed via web browser and don't need to be downloaded and installed on the device. For example, opening Facebook with your phone specific browser instead of an application. That would be an example of using mobile web app. Also, the specifics of testing as a mobile uh, Q engineer, you will have to be aware of the latest mobile trends, operating systems and devices, their popularity. Most popular devices will depend on the region and the product. I will uh, have two links, some examples where you can read about the latest uh, versions of Android and iOS. But again, most most of the time it will be a team decision where do you focus your testing effort with mobile. Okay. Now, some specific of uh, app installation for Apple devices. So you will have to have that IPA file uh, and it is an application archive that is contains an iOS app. In simple words, it's a file that can be installed on iOS devices and used as an application. One of the methods of installing an application is using Xcode. That's a development environment used to create apps for iOS. Uh, you will have to connect iOS device to a Mac via USB. You will have to open project in Xcode. You will have to select connected device as a target in the top toolbar and then click on play button to build and run the app on the device. Uh, you can also test iOS devices using test flight. So this is a specific uh, app on iOS store and you can upload the app to test flight via app store connect uh, add the email addresses of the testers in test flight testers will receive an invitation to download the app from test flight now this is again will be mostly like a team effort this has to be organized and structured so you'll have like a team lead or a test lead that will help you throughout the process right and then ad hoc distribution. So you'll have to export the app as an ad hoc build from Xcode, uh, distribute file.ipa uh, to testers, 
then they will install it via iTunes or other tools like Apple Configurator. Okay, so there are different ways how you can actually install application on iPhone to test it. Uh, and then you'll have to be able to gather logs. You can definitely do like screen recording and just screenshots and email them to yourself as part of log gathering process, but there are other tools you can use as well. So you will need to gather logs and images, videos for bug reports and test reports, right? You can gather logs in Xcode, uh, device and simulators window or in console app. Right in Xcode, you'll have to go to Window, Devices and Simulators, and then select the connected device, and then logs will be under the device information. You can view and export logs from there, uh, or you can open your console app on Mac and then select the Connect iOS device from the sidebar to view its logs. You can also use third party apps to intercept and analyze traffic, and I will be showing some of this later on. But you can use things like Charles Proxy. Fiddler uh, to capture HTTP, HTTPS uh, web traffic to do uh, web and API testing, uh, or you can use Wireshark to capture networking tr traffic and do troubleshooting. Now for uh, Android, there are, there's a little difference there, but uh, you will have to, first you'll have to enable developers mode on your Android device by going into settings, then then going into about phone, and then tapping on the build number seven times. So you tap on the build number multiple times. It will show that you're uh, enabled a developer's mode. Then you can go into the settings, developer options, and then enable USB debugging. So if you have an Android device, you can see it for yourself on your Android device. Now, after that, you'll have to obtain Android package kit file uh, of the app you need to test. So development team will usually provide this file. And then you'll have to put this file, this application on your phone. So you'll have to connect your device to computer uh, where you have Android debug bridge installed. I have the link here for the ADB. So essentially, it's a special tool that allows you your console and your computer to communicate with your Android device that is connected to your computer via USB. And you can use a uh, following command to install the APK. So you can do ADB install and then just provide the path to your APK file. Uh, or you can use Android Studio Code and I will show you in the next video how we can use Android Studio Code. Uh, you can use Android Studio Code and test with emulator, right? Uh, for Android log gathering, uh, you can do it through command prompt uh, or a terminal using logcat. So you can type adb logcat to start capturing logs. You can filter the output or save it to a file with additional command line options. Uh, for example, you can save logs to a file using adb logcat v time uh, android logs.txt command that you see here in the file on the screen. Um, or you can use Android Studio for logs, right? You'll have to connect your device to your computer using USB cable. You'll have to launch Android Studio and open LogCat window. And you want to ensure that your device is selected in the drop down menu of the LogCat window. You also want to filter log because LogCat output a lot of information. So you have to use filters to narrow down the logs to the relevant information for your app. You can filter by log level, like errors, warning, info, debug, verbose, and so on. Or by a tag that your application uses in its log messages. You can also use third-party apps, um, and again, we'll have an example of that with Charles Proxy, to intercept and analyze traffic. Uh, so Charles Proxy, Fiddler, they can be used for web traffic, and API testing, or Wireshark uh, can be used for networking troubleshooting. Now, what to focus on during mobile testing? There's a lot of things, right? So you can have functional behavior. So you want to verify all apps functionalities perform as expected. Uh, you can test user interface and experience. So assess that apps ease of use, design and navigation. Uh, you want to verify compatibility, so check the app on different devices, operating system versions, and screen sizes. You want to check performance, so evaluate the app's speed and responsiveness, test for any lags or crashes. You want to verify battery usage, so monitor how the app consumes battery power during various operations.
You might want to check for overheating and observe if the app causes the device to overheat during usage, right? You want to test networking speed. So you want to test how the app performs under different network conditions connected to Wi-Fi, uh, connected to 4G, 5G, 3G, and even lower speeds, right? You want to test security. So check for data leaks and proper handling of permissions. You want to verify accessibility. So ensure the app is usable by people with different abilities. And you want to verify localization. So validate proper functioning with different languages and regions if applicable. So with so many things to test, teams should prioritize. And uh, when you're testing mobile, you would normally have a test plan in place. How do you approach testing certain applications? Uh, you want to see team uh, figuring out what devices should be used first? Like what are the most popular devices for this product? Uh, what operating systems on those devices and what app version you want on those devices? You also want to use critical path and kind of mimic the basic, the most often used user behavior with the application, what user normally does as part of your like regression flow. And you want, want to ver verify new features uh, first. So whatever is getting added, you want to focus on that as well. So yeah, there is a bit of a difference when you approach mobile testing, uh, but most of it is just figuring out how to work with a mobile device, how to install the new build, new application, how to um, get the logs. And once you're done through that process, uh, it's very similar to normal testing that you would do with web, let's say, right, or API. The approach, the, the default, the basics, the foundation of testing is very similar. Uh, it just needs a little bit of a hands-on experience. So, and a lot of things that are priority, they will be unique per product, per team. Like in mobile testing, we need to do this or that, and that will completely depend on what actually is being tested, okay? Uh, so hopefully that helps. In the next video, we'll go and see the Android Studio. And maybe we'll do a little bit of a Charles proxy to capture the traffic and analyze traffic. All right. So this was Alex Yusei Days. Thanks for watching and bye.